Uh, good afternoon, and uh, thank you very much, Dr. Dobert. Many thanks to uh, IRASIC uh, Asian Stud ASEAN Study Center and, of course, the uh, AIC RIS for organizing this uh, international conference. And special thanks to Professor Sutipan, Professor Claire, and, of course, to Professor Prabir. While I'm happy to represent the University of the Philippines in this conference, the ideas and gaps are my and only my personal attribution and does not represent my institution's official stand in this issue. My paper uh, is actually a follow-up of um, the, to the Singapore-based think tanks commentary uh, discussing on ASEAN's positioning to include the role as a pivotal actor in creating an environment for economic development and people-centered prosperity in the region without undermining the participation of other states. By the way, I'm Jofi Santarita, uh, representing the Asian Center of the University of the Philippines. The concept of Indo-Pacific is relatively new to the Filipinos, but for those who are familiar, this is their idea. After doing a, uh, a quick survey to experts working on international relations, we had already a clear concept now in the Pacific as presented in the previous session. And of course, as mentioned by uh, Prof. Dewi a while ago, but it's also good to present how the Filipinos view the Indo-Pacific. So the concept or term Indo-Pacific as a framework from, uh, from the respondents, uh, some kind uh, solicits a scenario of a new proxy war between China and the US and that India is seen as a possible proxy between, uh, I mean, to counter China. And uh, this tension could be seen instead uh, from Asian lens and uh, in Asian backyard, not as West versus the East, not between the, new, the North and the South, but between Asian and Asian. In this Asian tension, ASEAN is being wooed by both parties to ally and therefore reminishing the non-aligned days which members were not aligned with competing parties and instead know how to quote unquote milk the two cows of which ASEAN could possibly replicate if it knows how to play well its leverage. This kind of view has affected both the individual member state and ASEAN as institution. Such stance or position is also influenced by the domestic affairs of the member state, such as the Philippines. Given such views on Indo-Pacific, the stance of the Philippines in the context of its participation in ASEAN are greatly affected by the domestic concerns, which also mentioned generally by Prof. Dewi. The national election and the change of heart to China and perhaps to the US, the result may change the position in the regional level and to the acceptance of the Indo-Pacific. It's the national election in 2020 next year and it's starting now. If it is a Duterte uh, ally, the positioning will be status quo, but if it is the opposition, it is most likely be through US. Whatever the result, the foreign policy and its current independent foreign policy, quote, unquote, will surely be affected. And this scenario could happen within six long years, coterminous with the next presidency. The second thing is the tension on the South China Sea, which is another issue to watch for by the Philippines and its role in ASEAN's positioning when conflicts rise come 2022 and beyond. In fact, the tension right now could be used as propaganda in the 2022 election and any tension from between the government to government and even non-state actors such as the Fisher Fox will have effect to the balancing or maintenance of neutrality for a member state such as the Philippines or of the regional body when all deemed it 
necessary. Another consideration is the suspension and possible abrogation of the visiting forces agreement and withdrawal of the American forces in the Philippines. This will greatly affect the public pulse and may veer towards China or otherwise. The other consideration is the economic recession because of the pandemic and the capital surge and investments. This will be another uh, swing factor of, of a possible decision when it comes to ASEAN's positioning and its relations with its neighbors. Given these conditions, will the Philippines be faithful to ASEAN centrality in case of conflict between US and China? For years, the Philippines has been consistent in moving along and supporting centrality with little uncomfortable compromise but not necessarily contradicting towards the solution of the body's decision. And I think it was discussed in the previous um, session. The Philippines faithfulness to centrality has been tested several times and at least for several decades. Now, how about the Philippines in ASEAN and the latter's pivotal role? The Philippines should maintain its independent foreign policy and must be weighing well its priorities with the US as, as an old ally and with China because of its BRI assistances. Despite the Philippines issues, it should not choose or force to take side between US and China. A question which was raised earlier by Ambassador Mohan Kumar in the morning opening session. Instead, it should serve as champion in ASEAN to serve as pivot and maintain its relations with India since it has no issues with this country for the last decades. ASEAN should also use this leverage to serve as broker rather than as competitor. It should know how to play its cards well. The Philippines as member of ASEAN is a, the, the, the test case or litmus case. Under the 30 administration, it started to negotiate its worth of its leverage with the US, which should have enjoyed maybe years after its colonization. At the same time, the Duterte administration also negotiated with China for assistance in different aspects. Like the Philippines case, ASEAN should also maximize the benefits it could, it could get, get from its relations with both China and the US. Now, the question is how to maximize that leverage. This is where the pivotal role or the positioning in the Indo-Pacific comes into the picture. At the current rate, the presence of the Indo-Pacific is but a powder keg or possible powder keg or possible another round of major power rivalry and black politics. Such scenario could force the small and middle power countries into yet another dilemma similar to what the community of states encountered in the 1950s and 1960s. If and when the world moves into another phase of black politics, the said countries may have to decide whether to align or not with one or the other centers of power. But in the end, I think they should and they cannot try not to try to reinvent the wheel because the community already has the institutional mechanism or template to use in facing such reality. That mechanism is the non-aligned movement. A replication of an organization should be reformed and sustained as well as to adapt and adjust to the pandemic and post-pandemic scenarios. The value add to this template referring to the non-aligned non movement at this time is the role of the ASEAN taking the driver's seat. There is a need to create a new national and international consciousness, or perhaps recreate to give way to that NAM 2.0. This is the time to nurture and utilize best the framework of Indo-Pacific to attain a collective self-reliance and collective resistance if necessary. How to do that? 
First is to operationalize the ASEAN outlook on Indo-Pacific and leave the non-aligned movement spirit by working actively with various mechanisms, including the RCEP, the BRI, and the Quad alliances. So in conclusion, I can say that the ASEAN positioning in the Indo-Pacific is based on centrality and in the domestic concerns of its member states. The kind of response of the member states like the Philippines is no, no doubt affected by its domestic affairs. Thus, ASEAN should also be prepared to manage not only the external changes, but also within, since any domestic problem will surely affect the positioning of ASEAN in its immediate and extended neighbors. That ASEAN should not be forced to choose and that should maintain its centrality by playing its political, economic, and sociocultural cards very well and maximize its leverage. This can be done by revitalizing the non-aligned non movement or non-aligned movement 2.0 as template. Only by doing that, ASEAN could contribute in making Indo-Pacific as the avenue for cooperation and friendly competition rather than conflict and coercion. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair.